Right, so we ended up actually discussing the spoilers on stream. So I thought I'd chop it up, take it out of the, the VOD and release it because it is, well, time sensitive, but I also think it's, you know, a decent discussion. So if you want to watch it, enjoy. I will still be doing separate videos in a more obviously digestible manner rather than this, this hour and almost half an hour video, right? For new assassin cards and ninja cards, Enigma and Illusionist, and then probably uh, we'll do the generic mystic and expand slot all together, right? So that way they come out a little bit quicker, a little bit again, easier to, to digest and watch. But if you do watch this, hopefully you enjoy and thank you. Also just a quick disclaimer, right? I'm not a competitive player. I do fun, meme combo shenanigans, and that's about it. So take everything that I do say with a little grain of salt, right? And if I'm wrong, point it out because I do want to learn. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Yeah, I can, I can give you my, my take on new if you want. We have Master Redation 2.0 because it doesn't get destroyed. We have a weird piece of rare equipment that should be common. We have the best common gloves and, and boots you'll ever get. <laughs> uh, Gorgon's gaze, insane as well. Right, well. We'll do this seriously. Okay, so back in this way. Right, with quick knives, this turns your arm slot into a go again and buffing, which is just ridiculous, right? You get two chances basically you can run concealed blade and then have three chances in class constructed and either way it just opens up the field for so many more blues again not even as swinging this you can obviously swing it but the fact that flick knives makes it a guaranteed hit is what will make beckoning miss blade so strong or even just hurl right hurl itself because hurl has go again uh it then becomes a one plus though but still better than obviously paying two so either attacking with a blue that has go again starting a sequence and then flick knivings to then be able to throw in a different blue that does not have go again. Insane. Using hurl. Okay. Still going to get you the proc. Still going to allow you to play a blue that is more value than it should be. Right? So, great. Fantastic. Mask of Recurring Nightmares. So, Mask of Predation is destroy this. And then I believe your next assassin. Why am I, why am I guessing? We'll try and do this from memory. Mask of Predation. Which does see play and has a ridiculous value attached to it for said reason. Is it? It's not predation, is it? It's perdation? It's perdition. Was it? Max of. Mask of perdition? I always think predation, like predatory. But anyway, so this has the destroy and then target assassin gains when this hits. Banish the top card of the deck. And this sees a lot of play, obviously. This is just that on steroids because now it's banished a card from their hand, which is value right you disrupt whatever they're saving to play on their turn and it doesn't get destroyed so this is this is insane and before we saw the the final or the only uh, ninja legendary it's then legendary i would have said this was the best legendary in the set but now it doesn't even come close to the value you can get out of out of zen uh snake hide when it's equipped face down i saw your turn if you have exactly one life you may turn this face up this whole one life mechanic i do like I just think all the payoff for it is absolutely shit, right? So you're at one life. You've, you've, you're, you're at the winning stage. Sorry, you're at the losing stage, not winning. <laughs> that was bad. You're at the losing stage. And this is the, I'm going to live. I'm going to survive an extra couple turns. Thanks to this. No, no, you're not. Again, this being a double react. So generate a react, act as a react, and then play another react is you know, fantastic, because we've seen a lot of you require double reaction mechanics. Uh, ch -ch -ch, I think chat has screwed itself again. But I have to zoom in. Projector outputs. You need to see what was said. What was it? Still sad that mask can't trigger contracts, but probably doesn't need to. Yeah. Mask was still strong. Uh, do you think the chi cost is going to be a big drawback? No, absolutely not. Because news effects is not really something you'd want to, you know, pay for over and over again, right? I mean, the combo itself, once you get down to that end stage, is you're playing your opponent's stuff. Any excess chi, you're pitching them, right? Remember that, you're pitching them. And now Mask of Predation also nude is their hand, right? So if they're going to go, well, okay, you're out of luck. You've got no more cards to play. 
I'm just going to face tank whatever you do with my deck. And then I'm going to use my card value, right, of having proper cards in my hand to clap back. Well, now no, right? One she goes into new so that you can play their effects. You then, you know, maybe swing with Mist Blades to give whatever blues they have go again. And then when they defend and they're trying to save that piece to attack back, you use Mask of Recurring Nightmares. And it means that the whole detriment of Chi being the last cards you have is no longer a worry because you have two very strong payoff mechanics. Every time you draw at least two Chi, one goes into Mask, one goes into New. And that's in itself a very powerful turn. Not to mention then you continue, you know, the cycle of hitting cards and having stuff to play as new. So I don't think Chi is a detriment to this. In fact, I think it shouldn't have been Chi. I think it should have been ridiculously costly, like four. So you're always going down a card. But yeah, it's it. Again, I would have hands down said this was the craziest legendary, strongest legendary in the set until we saw Zen, which makes me curious what Enigma is going to be, right? Although it'd have to be something like uh, whenever Ward pops, create two spectral shield tokens for me to say it's, it's more insane than the other ones. So create a Slither, plus one attack, creates, uh, sorry, Slither, go again, create a Fang Strike, plus one attack. Right, it's mainly for the double react that makes them good. The Stilettos, right, I, I don't think people realize how big you could actually go with Nu reliably, right? Because then you're forcing a lot of block, you're furthering your end game, but then you have cards like this and the other Slither cards, which are give anything go again, right? Anything go again. We have never had a leg piece that, again, has been catered towards that, right? Snapdragon Scalers is one or less. Time Skippers, you have to put three in to be able to have a big attack have go again. Stilettos, pay one. Keep the silver till you want. Play a massive any color attack and give a go again. Slithers is not a comp. Slithers is an M to legendary. Sorry, still happens. You know what I'm trying to say. All together, right? It's news already insane. But I still think Zen's better. Gorkin's Gaze. Create a Slither in your hand, right? Again, Slither. We just went on that whole spiel about how insane Slither is. Uh, banish all depending attack action cards on the combat chain. If Chi was pitched to play this, you may play the banish cards in combat chain without paying their cost. Now, I, I, I'm not, you know, fully versed in how this interaction should work, but what this reads to me is shred every single card they play, right? Yeah, and Slayers can then also then count as the double react for a lot of cards they require. But Slither, Slither should have been gated behind cost or behind color, right? That's that's my opinion. And overall, I would say that as a, as a set, this is the strongest set we're getting with the strongest classes or characters or heroes, however you want to phrase it, we're getting. And also the most cards that are definitely bannable from the perspective of what LSS said around Berserk in the fact that this now limits any design they make in the future. Slither means that any card they print in the generic or the assassin slot can have go again. Yeah, so Shred is, is all attack actions. Sorry, Gorgon's Gaze is Shred all attack actions. So I was correct in understanding that. So yeah, this in itself is still absolutely insane, right? That's going to be so powerful. Even if you only hit one, it's still then better for Shred. You're putting two, but you're getting a Slither, you know, token out of it. So that is again, fantastic. Slither is busted. And then we have, you may play the bash cards, this combat chain, if you've used Chi to pay for this. Oh, but wait, without paying their cost. I have no idea why Nu is without paying their cost. I understand for like the Guardian matchup, uh, to some extent Brute, or I don't know, Warrior, where you want to play a few cards and they're all costly, that that could be irksome. But the fact that you can play everything for free, even off of Gorgon's Gaze, not just News Ability, is, is ridiculously broken, right? So yeah, depending on what attacks you hit, you can play this, you can most likely play two. So I would assume you've you've played something with Go Again, something Assassin, you'll use Beckoning Misplayed, done you know new things to then generate a Slither and play, you know, maybe two of their attacks without paying their cost. This card, again, is ridiculous. It should not generate Slither, or Slither should not just have free reign to target anything at all. Siren's Call. Will your defending hero's hand and choose a blue card? 
as a chain link, as a defending card, if you do draw a card. I personally, I always love cycle, and this is cycle with upside. One, it's a three block. So that's another thing. When we get these types of effects that are well standard, we don't see three block. But these are all three block cards. When really they should be two, or in Gorgon's case, I honestly think that the way to balance this, it should have been a one. It should have been a awful or zero block, right? Dead card in your hand that just has this godly amount of return value. But yeah, Siren's Call, again, Cycle, if need be, and then also a freebie to pick a blue card, right? I mean, if new sees competitive success, every single deck in the meta has to be reworked, has to have a lower cost basis, which also then makes them a lot worse. Because, again, yeah, new has such a strong starting game to then a ridiculous end game if there are blues in your opponent's deck. So the fact that she is a hard counter to blue just across the board can wreck so many decks or, you know, are just going to be used against them. I almost think it should have hit yellow instead of blue as new because yellow is very middle ground. It's very, if you go through deck lists, right? Yellow is definitely a lot less frequent than blue or red. So I do think new probably would have been still pretty strong, but a lot less busted if her gimmick was around yellows instead of blues. But the blue is just insane. Yeah, she is a hard counter to the color blue. And the color blue is your value. So she's a hard counter to value in every deck. Meta relevant means that she, she makes every other deck devalued. That's just insane. The chakra cards, I, I don't think any of the transcend cards are strong, right? There's just better things you can do. Yes, it's it's nice payoff. Uh, I just I would never take them because they're all reactive, right? Because you know in it in the, the transcend sequence, you're playing a blue, you're transcending, you're using said cheat. In this sequence, you are I don't know attacking, transcending, then using Thai chakra. There are obviously the react ones, right? That you can let like, resolve first and then follow up with these. But across the board, I do think this whole if you've transcended mechanic on some cards, especially the attack reaction slot, is probably the weakest, right? Because this is, you specifically need, well, actually, no, they're all instant, aren't they? So you can you can play any of them no matter what, right? But I just, I don't think that's good enough value, right? Even, uh, was it, on its high end is a plus five, right? I think there's uh, consistently plus four in the red slot, if I'm thinking correctly. So, you know, without Transcend, it's worse than what you could take. With Transcend, it's slightly better, but not enough. And then also at the one cost, right? For a lot of the four buff, uh, only Ranger comes to mind, but I know it's the same sort of balancing across the board, right? They're four and an effect. So the fact that this is just five, no effects, I don't think it's it's that great, the Chakra cards. Uh, Zen to the K, it's a zero cost blue, easy way to open with the Transcend. Uh, I'm going to scroll down and look. <laughs> Where's his chakra? Do I skip it? Win chakra. Uh, if you're... No, the next reaction time you play this turn gets plus two. If you've transcended, you can say gets plus four. Yeah, so the zero cost definitely helps this out. Again, this is where the confusion comes into it for me because this is the correct stat, right? This makes it two above the usual slot. So when, when a red buff card is zero cost it's usually at max three right again look through them all with maybe an effect but the ones with effects are usually super strong so the fact that this is two extra over that is definitely better the fact that this is one cost four five with no extra effect makes it makes it kind of worse the blue just because it's pitchable and then also activating maybe but overall i think there's just there's more value cards you can run into and you really don't need these reactions i mean right this is already taken a three this is definitely taken probably a three or a sideboard at a three right you don't need them there'll just be other stuff to do uh hits target assassin or mystic attack gets plus three if you pitch the blue card this turn create a slither in hand see again one cost three and a much stronger effect than the chopper so yeah why why take this for the extra two when i can take this and attack with something else right so that just super more value than time chakra in fact that makes this 
okay, even though it's not a four, like most one cost buffs that are red. So his is the rare. Tide Trucker to me is the common. Yeah. God. Yes. New is going to be so flexible and limited. Uh, was this? Intimate inducements. Attack assassin or mystic attack action gets plus one. That's okay. I mean, I'm guessing from this giant wall of text, it wasn't really necessary. Look at the top four cards. The defending hero's deck and choose a card. If it's blue, it has zero base defense. Put the chosen card onto the active chain link as a defending card. And the rest in any order. So, yeah. Four card manipulation of your opponent's deck in a game like Flesh and Blood is is insane. Throw in the ability to take out one of said cards. If it's blue, again, for the news plan and also give it zero or even just, you know, put something shitty on the chain link. Yeah, so far, all the commons are better than than the rares. Weirdly. Is there only, is there only one rare? Really? That's interesting. Uh, yeah, so inducement, I don't really care about the one. Even two cards is still kind of nice. I mean, zero cost, look at your opponent's two cards, right? Understand what they're going to do for the next turn. Yeah, is it, I think decent. Again, three block if it's if it's need be. So, yeah, nothing can go wrong with that. Uh, run red back shroud. That I will have to refresh my memory. It's in the chest slot though, right? So I don't think there's anything else. So I do think it will be red back. I'm pretty sure I bought red back for this reason. Yeah, the next attack reaction card you play this turn costs one less. Yeah. Yeah, red back shroud. I mean, yeah, we'll look at. We don't need... Well, I, I do kind of want to do class. I also want the generics. You definitely don't need Tunic. Getting across the board... Well, okay. Then yes. If this is the conundrum, yes. Tunic is definitely not necessary in any of the uh, the Mystic classes, in my opinion. Right? You just... You have such a strong basis that you don't need that one resource. Yes, it can come in handy. It can definitely come in handy. But... I would, I would take this. Zen wants to play such an aggressive line just because the more you play aggressively, the more your opponent is losing no matter what they do. They don't block, they take damage. They block, they give you end game mechanics. So yeah, Redback Shroud is, is probably going to be taken in my opinion. Uh, Slither, again. Target any zero cost. I mean, they could have they thrown a one onto this and be fine. Right? You'd have resources floating, you'd be able to utilize it, but this is just a blanket. Any attack in the game gets go again. Any attack. Again, you can run just a, a monstrously big new and have Slither make it all work out. Right? I, I, all the assassin cards that are in, uh, in this, you don't have to use. You don't have to actually use Banish by that way. You have so many ways to manipulate the chain or just the graveyard, then I can see her running just a big ass build that just slithers over and over again. Fang Strike, Fang Strike, I'm meh about, right? A plus one isn't that substantial. If you generate more of them at a time, maybe, but it's still good because it still activates, you know, reactionary things. But still, is insane. I also skipped Venomous Bite. And it's great at Fang Strike. Again, one for three with an effect. So still better than the chakra in my eyes, right? It's a one for four. So it's still better than chakra. Well, more consistent than chakra, we'll put it that way. Plus then again, the reaction being, you know, the whole play two mechanic. So yeah, all together. She's insane, right? Go wide, go big. Everyone else go home. Doesn't matter. There's, there is no way to play around her without just cutting blues or making them really shit blues that you are just using to pitch. And then, therefore, you take out her endgame, but you also take out your endgame. That is that is the way to counter Nu, right? Just the easiest way. So I do think Nu is, is sufficiently strong, but she's not as strong as Zen. Zen is done as well, right? So, you know, we might as well do Zen. Yeah. Ah, screw it. We're on a roll, we'll just, we'll, we'll go through the cards. So, Sacred Art for Enigma. Enigma is still, again, strong in her own right. The whole gimmick is, I'm building up defense, I'm building up damage prevention, 
and I'm also building up the things to kill you with. So, yeah, what can go wrong with that? Again, I'm not playing defense or playing offense. I'm playing Enigma, and I'm doing whatever I need to do to either block you out or smack you down. So, yeah, Enigma in her own right. But personally, I do think that she is going to be the weakest, but none of these three are going to be weak. That's that's needs to clearly be stated. This is, in my opinion, the strongest set that LSS are or have released to this point, right? That's including Tails and, and Everfest and all the elemental shenanigans, right? Just because this is insane. I mean, Frostbite would probably be the way to counter all this, but obviously we don't have Frostbite anymore. We don't have Fatigue, but again, with new, what, what do you do? You slow it down to what? You slow Enigma down to do what? She's going to continue building a board. You slow Zen down to do what? Zen would probably succumb to Frostbite, at the worst out of all of them. Uh, okay, so again, we have the weird one life mechanic for an okay effect. I really think that these should have been absolutely busted to actually be this whole, it's my time to come back, rather than oh, I'm on one life. You're going to ping me with something, aren't you? I mean, in the... In the trio, you know, if new as flick knives, there's your one, right? It's just you're at such a, a losing state, in my opinion, that this is this is not going to matter as much as it could. Uh, truth retold, put an aura from your graveyard. Sorry, let me let me reread this one, right? Instant, pay one, turn his face up, puts shimmering silvers, shimmers of silver, whatever the card is, from your graveyard on the bottom of your deck. That's the only scenario that I see this actually getting used. But I do see this being taken for that exact reason, because Shimmers of Silver is just such an insane card in Enigma. Uh, turn this face up, put a one counter on Aura you control with Wald. That was horrible English as well. <laughs> put a plus one counter on the Aura you control. I still can't do it. You control with Ward. So, again, we can reread that, right? Turn this face up, give your, your Aura go again, right? Because of... Not Zen, uh, not Enigma. Where's the... It's it's in the Illusionist, right? The new scroll. Her Sacred Art, though. Two Spectral Shields, one counter on each aura. Again, reword that. Give every aura you control. Go again. And Transcend. Insane. Her Chakra, Damage Prevention, again with the Transcend. Yeah. Depending on which one you're playing, sure. But, again, I, I, don't, I don't really like them all. The prevent is definitely nice for protecting ward, but it's just that clause. I mean, I take it for the three, just to again prevent three ward being popped. A shelter ward X if X is four. Sorry, X is four if you've pitched a blue card this turn. Otherwise, it's one. So either way, you're getting an aura for one attack or an aura with four attack. It still furthers your game. Still something to sacrifice instead of spectral shields. So fine. Waning vengeance when the sleeves creates. Sorry, if you've pitched a blue card, create a Spectral Shield token. Again, same thing, right? Protecting all your other stuff, and it's generating a Spectral Shield token. Whether or not you get said Spectral Shield token, don't really care. It's just another big ward item to protect, to protect your actual valuable ward pieces. Waxing Spectre, if you pitched blue, this enters with a one counter. Again, rephrase it. This enters with go again. Ward three, protects everything else. So, yeah. Enigma has just a solid strategy and game plan. Then we get to Zen. And Zen is find any combo you want and win, right? So Zen plus this card, Shifting Winds of the Mystic Beast is another one where I look at it and go, well, in terms of LSS and what they've said about Berserk, anytime they create any combo card whatsoever, they now have to go, well, Zen can play it. Zen can do it easily. So, huh. do we do we ban this? Do we tweak Zen? Do we not make the combo piece? Because again, the, the thing they said about Berserk was it impedes their ongoing development, right? So it needed to go. Slither. Exactly the same. Any card they print now can be slithered. Now works in Noon. Any combo they print now works in Zen and can skip all of its applicable steps. So, Shifting Winds of the Mystic Beast. Whenever you play Crouching Tiger this turn, name a card, gets that name. If a cheat was pitched to play this, create two Crouching Tigers in your hand. Didn't need that secondary effect. The fact that it has that secondary effect with the legendary is absolutely insane. So whenever you transcend, you may gain one resource, right? 
God, this is... This is godly. Absolutely godly. But yeah, so, again, Dishonor. You have to go through this giant sequence of finding these right cards to play. Well, not anymore. As then, you banish Dishonor. You then have this card, and you play it. You get one Crouching Tiger offset. If you're able to use Cheat, you get two more Crouching Tigers. You play three Crouching Tigers. You give them all the appropriate names. Uh, what is it? Summoning Gust Wave, right? Descending Gust Wave? Something, and Bonds of Ancestry. You can then play Dishonor from Zen, because it's, ban it's banished, right? You, you skip all the steps of finding said combo pieces. You skip all steps of playing the correct combo pieces. No... Any combo they print automatically works in Zen. And there's some other insane ones, right? We were halfway through looking at Pounding Gale, which Queenie pointed out. Pounding Gale is insane because you have cards like White Blue Yonder and you have all these other buffs in Mystic. If Pounding Gale would deal damage to a hero, instead it deals double that much. It's red, right? So that would usually be a detriment in combo. But now you again run one copy, you zen it away, you do your combo turn, and you end with a pounding gale that you make ridiculously strong, and if even half of it gets through, it's doing exactly the same damage. So, yeah. I, I don't see how they went on this whole spiel about Berserk. They banned the other, the other card for Tails, that again impedes development, to then make all of these cards. So, I, I'm very curious how long these last, right? If at any point we revisit Ninja, Zen has to be reworked if he hasn't LL'd at that point. Anytime we go back to a big set, again, like Guardian Brutes, right? New, because New will have that avenue. I don't know if they'll be explored necessarily, but it'll always be there and it'll always be a capability. Your CNC has go again. That phrase enough should be insane enough to understand. Because what's better than one CNC? How about two, right? They block the first one. They prevent the arsenal destruction. Okay, here's another one for you. And it's not just CNC, right? You have Wreck Havoc, you have these other arsenal destruction cards. I mean, back-to-back -back surgical extraction. It's just, it's insane to me. Tooth and Claw, also insane. When it's tax, you may reveal any number of crouching tigers from your hand. If you revealed one or more, go again. Two or more, plus one. Three or more, cycle. Shouldn't be zero cost. Shouldn't be three block. Yeah, this is this is living legend. This is Tales 2.0 in terms of strength. But yeah, so tooth and claw, you need three crouching tigers. Again, shifting gets two. Zen gets one. Uh, the sacred art, wherever it is, should be there. Gets you two. This, this doesn't seem like a hard ask. Roar of the Tiger still exists. Roar of the Tiger gets you one. So if you have three, it's a zero cost cycle and do four damage. Zero cost, cycle a card, do four damage. Just absolutely insane. And then, yeah, again, this. Why is this godly? Whenever you transcend, you may gain one resource. What this means is whenever you transcend, you have four resources available, right? It's like inventing a whole nother color for the game that Zen has access to. Whenever you transcend, create a purple card or whatever color, you know, four would be. So the reason this is busted is again, you know, Ninja has such a cheaper cost basis than every other class. You bumping that up by one, again, opens up so many avenues. You don't have to pay for most combo pieces because of shifting winds. So all this value that you generate can go into what? Anything else you want. It can go into reactions. It can go into defense. It can go into just drawing. This makes art of war neutral to positive draw instead of negative to neutral draw. This makes tome, again, neutral to positive draw, not negative to neutral draw. It makes cash in usable without actually generating silver or gold, just off of transcending. Zen has something that has to give, in my opinion. Three cards, and we've already seen that they're absolutely busted, right? Plus Zen's own ability. Uh, get Tiger Hide, once again. Three block at one life. Does not seem viable to me, but we'll see. Stride, when it's defense, create a Crouching Tiger in hand. 
Blade Break. Eh. There's easier ways to create Crouch Tigers. But the fact that it's in hand is definitely nice. Again, it allows you to start your turn with five, which for, again, Art of War, any of those other things that you can use Crouching Tiger for, completely applicable. So that does actually make it strong. Yeah, no, let me let me redo that one, because this is, this is, again, not a common. This is free Art of War, right? Start your turn with five cards, one in the arsenal. Don't worry about blocking. Well, you get one block, but, you know, one block's not really going to make a difference. And then go into a massive turn. Right, Art of War is paid for, thanks to the Crouching Tiger. It's now a neutral draw because of the pitch. So it's neutral draw, cycle two cards basically, and you know, have two resources floating, something like that. You throw in Transcend, have three resources floating. The Sacred Arts, two Crouching Tigers and all your Crouching Tigers get plus one. I mean, it's, it's amped to draw, plus get your resource back. So yeah, Zen is just insane. They went, Hmm, Crouching Tiger isn't playable. What can we do? What can we do? Oh, I know. How about Crouching Tiger is just every other ninja card in the game? Plus, plus, then Zen can find whatever end combo piece. Yeah, yeah. That's that's how we'll make Crouching Tiger work. Again, you can throw Crouching Tigers without buff on the chain to fulfill the most combo requirement because none of them, well, some of them I think actually do have if the if the last attack was this and it hit, but most of them just have if the last attack on the combat chain was X card. Doesn't have to hit, just it has to exist. The chakra, uh, the next strategy how you play gets plus three. If you transcend it, so it gets plus five. But the zero cost is definitely better than the other two. I still wouldn't take it. There's just so many other powerful cards that you could run. Companion of the Claw, once it attacks, if you pitch the blue, create a crouching tiger. So two into a crouching tiger, into your other combo pieces, fine. It's probably too costly in my opinion, right? Again, there's just so many better things for you to do. Harmony of the Hunts, if you pitch blue, create a Crouching Tiger, but now at one cost. So I do think this one is a lot more usable, but look at that. These are, these are correctly statted and they're average effects. I just, some of the, some of these choices to be three, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Cause again, this is the big balancing act. These should be two defense for their abilities. It's just, it's insane. Uh, we have Tiger from Incantation. Next Crouching Tiger you play gets plus three. If you pitch the blue this turn, create a Crouching Tiger in hand, go again. With all the resources floating, converting cards and buffing them into Crouching Tigers is definitely powerful. Again, with Shifting Winds. So I do like Harmony and Tiger because they're one, right? Again, they're covered. Thanks to this, anytime you transcend, then you can still go into whatever you normally do. So the one costs are definitely your highest value, right? You can sort of go for two, but I don't really see a point. I'd rather just Harmony or Tiger. Again, do damage, create Crouching Tigers, use the Crouching Tiger game plan, go into any combo you possibly want. Uh, what are we up to? Mystic, Aqua, Seeing Shell. It's just, it's the commoner's crown, right? That's basically all it is. Instant, turn this face up, draw a card, it's how you turn, destroy this. The whole block is nice as well, right? Plus, so it allows you to potentially cycle on your opponent's turn and still block if they break the chain link over and over, or at least block the one. As, otherwise, on your turn, it is just a cheap man's crown, right? Instead of a gold token, you now get a silver token, basically. Uh, we have the Koi Bless Kimono. Again, a one life shtick. This is by far the best, though, right? Again, destroy this, search your, your deck for an energy, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle. You don't pay anything, you don't discard a card, you don't lose a card, you just lose this. So the fact that you can then start your turn with a blue pitchable that activates a lot of your abilities, be it your actual hero ability or some other cards is, again, super strong. The one life, the exactly one life, I do think they should have been threshold, you know, like one to five, if you blow five life, something like that, to make them see a lot more play. But this one is is definitely the correct effect for the exactly one life. Just four ward, three block, three block, I, I don't like that. But this, this is okay. Uh, waves of the Aqua Marina, turn its face up, target attack gets plus one. It's okay. Again, it's something that you can repeatedly block with, but at this point of the game, right, everyone knows not to break the chain, not to allow your opponent to reuse equipment. So I don't necessarily see this being used. For, for limited, we are seeing some of the better cards, right, that we have ever seen, right? The jank sets in Dust or Dawn, we'll go with that. Horrible, horrible across the board. 
Right, the Radiant sets, the whatever Darkness set, and Frontline set. Yeah. Yeah. These in Cold Fog, I like the art already, so that's fine. And then their effects, super okay. Super bad. Uh, the Prevent one, right, so destroy this, prevent one damage, activate this only while this is face down. It's fine too. I, I think they needed more cloaked equipment, and maybe we'll get another set with cloaked. But the whole cloaked mechanic doesn't really work, in my eyes, right? In any format, no matter what it is, even limited, it, it will never be super relevant for you to go, ah, what are they hiding? But it's still cool. You saw Radiant played in Fatigue Bolton, really? That is, that is news to me. <laughs> but is that because it's useful or because there's just nothing else? And what slot was it, right? Because is it getting replaced with the Armory deck? Ugh. I don't like them in Cold Foil either. They should have been Rainbow Foil. If they were Rainbow Foil, they'd have a bit more of my respect. It was for Kano, okay. Alright, that's... That's a little bit more acceptable. But yeah. And there's other effects. But I do like the, uh, the chaff, right? Just for the draft sets in this. And there's only two instead of three. Thank God. Uh, tune with Cosmic Vibrations. When this attacks a hero, defends a hero... Heroes attack, reveal the top card of their deck. Uh, if the revealed card is blue, it gets plus three or plus three. That's that's kind of okay. Again, it's just more F you if you play blue. So, will it be used? Yeah, it's still wonderful art. I mean, it has upside maybe if had go again. But a zero for five, the block is probably what you'd just run, right? A blue pitch ball that can potentially be a five block is probably worthwhile. Plus then, you know, in more aggressive decks where you don't want defense reactions or you don't want, uh, what well, block? Is block coming back? It's been a while since we've seen block. I think block is another mechanic like Unity that just went away. But yeah, it has its uses. Levels of enlightenment. You can already see the three cards and it's absolutely fine. When the stacks, choose one for each blue card. Oh, let's choose one for each. Okay, um... Huh, so better in line strike. Well, not as good because the, the damage is obviously less, but yeah. When this attacks, choose one for each blue card you've pitched. Insane. Right? Free cycle, one for one, five, and go again. Definitely good. Tenants busted. Every time they well, almost every time, they they print you know, uh, draw card, it's always going to be strong, because draw is just so impactful. In Flesh and Blood, right, so two cards for four is still cash-in value, uh, three cards for four is insane value. It's instant as well, so it's equivalent to Tome of Divinity, but I don't think Tome of Divinity gets that much play, because there's just better things to do with your cards and soul, but still, it's, it's great. For me, in combo, it's fantastic. Second Tenant of Chi, Tide, Transcended, this gets plus two. Meh. These, the the Mystic, especially these four. I, I thought they were going to be good and useful, especially in like new, but there is just better things for you to do, right? Because again, this being a three for seven in new that you can slither, give it a go again. Seems okay, but there is just better stuff to do. But still, they're, they're fantastic artwork, nonetheless. But they are a bit of a, a miss. The go again, again. A buff versus the ability to play something else is is the comparison to always make. Right? So I will always take the ability to play something else. You choose the same option more than once, can you? Uh, it doesn't have that clause. So in in Fab, it's usually if it states you can, you can, otherwise you can't. Right? They, they've ne there's never been a card that says you can only choose each mode once from recollection. It's only been cards that say you can choose each mode more than once right so the blood on hands so you may choose each mode twice or whatever the word is right so i do think it'll just be if you pitched three blue cards draw two and go again but if you could stack draw a card that'd be fantastic too <laughs> deep blue c half a final act that ends up being better yeah so again my my head cannon for this is they made melody they tested Melody. They went, mm, if we bought this class constructed, how bad would it be? Uh, how about we just halve it? Give it a heftier cost? Yeah, no. Deep Blue Sea is fantastic. 
right? It's blue, which makes it better than final act. The four cost isn't a detriment. It's a, it's actually better, right? Because it's not six. It's float two resources. So it's it's still equivalent to final act, right? Pitch one blue, get the buff, and then one cost. Uh, it's, it, yeah, it's just, it's fantastic, right? The baseline combo for every single mystic in this set can be final act. And then they just have other insanity. So I do like it. Wide Blue Yonder, again, absolutely insane. We will build Pounding Gale, Wide Blue Yonder, and it will be glorious, right? So if every blue you've pitched, your target attack gets plus one. In Malady, you never pitch anything otherwise. In Mystic, you're definitely probably not going to pitch anything otherwise. I mean, the only issue is every combo deck that I'm going to make from Mystic gets hard counted by new. But other than that, still fantastic. There's just so many cards that reap benefits from this. We did Eradicate new, right? Uh, was that uh, banish cards from their deck for the damage dealt, yeah. And we did, I think we did like 28 damage with it, right? And that was not the highest you could possibly pull off. So, you know, eradicate new, pounding gales in. There is shenanigans to be had with this card, and therefore this, this is one of my favorite cards in the set. And the artwork is nice too. I think this artwork should have been the playmat, in all honesty. What we're getting is very old Miss Vale artwork before they've settled on this blue idea, unfortunately. So I wish, you know, that was touched up or this artwork was the, the playmat. I think this would have been perfect. Again, you'd have the little guy in the corner. You'd, you know, expand the mountain range a little bit. It'd look nicer. Big blue sky. This gets plus one for each blue card you've pitched this turn. If only this was generic, Kano would be loving it. Right? I don't, well, you'd not really even need it, but yeah, it, it definitely has its uses. As long as you've pitched one, it's normal value. Anything greater than that, and because it's zero cost, it's better. So it's okay. I don't think I'd play it. The, uh, the ocean set, however you want to phrase it. Actually, no. What do we have? We have river, river, kind of. Well, it's, they're probably all river. We have the river set. Eh. Wish they had another clause to gain, go again, right? If you played another blue, it uh, gets plus two. If you pitch the blue, it gets go again, something like that. Then I'd like them a bit more as they are. Mm. You can choose the same option more than once. No, God, why is that just popping up? I wonder why Streamlabs shits itself. Uh, first turn of Chi Moon. The next blue attack this turn gets when this stacks your card. Again, insane. It's a three block and cycle. So what's not to love, right? You draw it, it's just cycle away. If you need to, you can pitch it. If you need to, you can block for three. Again, this type of effect, it should have been two block, and then it would have been less playable, but still probably used because it is, once again, free cycle. And in a class like new, you really don't care about, you know, decking out because you'll just have a bunch of chi with, again, mask of predation 2.0 and your ability uh, is, is more than enough value to still have a more than fighting chance when you don't have a deck. Next blue attack this turn gets plus two. Kind of weak, right? Because it's in blue, the red would be four. So that is the correct stat line, but it's still kind of weak to me. G win. Next blue action card. This is good to know, right? So you can manipulate action points if you give a instant card go again, or you play a card with go again at instant speed. You can run shenanigans. Right, and Enigma has a few ways to make cards instant speed. So if you can give them go again, this is definitely a combo piece. But once again, strong effect, three block. So you can slot it in. It is, it is, you know, a uh, poor man slither. So it's still useful in my eye, right? Any blue action card, so attack or otherwise, can have go again. Once again, you can just use this to play big and get around the detriment of, you know, big is you don't, you don't, you know, have the cost, but you're in all blue, so you're fine. It doesn't have go again. Well, now it does. Drop in the ocean and all the transcend cards. Fantastic, right? I love this mechanic. Just because it's insane. Get minor value and maintain its, its pitchable status. And then also feed into the new mechanics. I don't think, from a balancing standpoint, that it should have been usable for normal cost. I understand what they're trying to do, the whole... Don't feel bad if all you have left is chi, but you should, right? You should have a detriment. Flesh and blood has always been that whole strategy, that whole weighing up of, of cards and decisions, and inner chi goes and sort of just brain deads it, right? 
you really don't care. You have cost either way. So yeah, because of that, all the NGA cards are fantastic, even if they're just minor benefit. I mean, again, it's it's basically the the Fable cards, right? So I see play because it's pitch blue and opt. I see some play because it's pitch and gain life. This is pitch and target attack gets minus one. Pitch, gain one life. This is, I mean, this is this is a harder parent up, right? As long as you pay to blue. Pass over, banish target card from the opposing graveyard. Good as well. Uh, path well travel, attack gains go again. Slither with resource. These are all equivalents to the Fable gems when you think about it. Reserve Tradition, insane as well. This is definitely the, the craziest of the lot. So put target action cards from the graveyard on the bottom of your deck. Rising Sun, Cycle, right? Always good. So the Pot, Shuffle, useful in some circumstances. But again, overall, they are, they could have been the shittest effects in the world and they'd still be good because it's maintain three pitch and gain some sort of upside. I, I personally would run every single one of them. Uh, in most, you definitely always run Preserve. You definitely always run Rising Sun. I don't think you take Sir the Pot. You could probably take Homage just for the sake of having Chi for your hero. So at minimum, I'd say you'd run those three, definitely, all the time. The Go Again is definitely strong in the right deck. In Enigma, probably not. So that would be the next. And then Passover, definitely for new. Uh, Drop in the Ocean and the Grain that tips the scale. Uh, probably the big cutaways for me. And Sir the Pot would be the least playable, right? But Preserved Edition, is, is definitely going to be the best one. Rising Sun, followed. And then again, we have uh, Zen or New, New, Enigma or others, I guess, just because you want the resources. And then maybe, maybe. And as long as the situation is okay with it, Shuffle is fine. I mean, Shuffle with Preserved Tradition makes it better because you take the high value card that you put at the bottom and you put it randomly, which is always going to be better than the bottom. But yeah, three. At the very least, I would say always included, just to pay. But I, I, I can easily foresee them all being run. Again, I personally would take the minus one just to get the, the chi value, right? A minus one on attack to then find a combo piece in Zen and create a crash for Tiger. I'm okay with that. Uh, new, uh, minus one to be able to play my opponent's graveyard. I'm okay with that. Enigma, a minus one to create a spectral shield token that has go again. Well, it just counteracts the minus one. So... Yeah, even they could be the shittest effects in the world in all honesty. And because of the hero abilities, I still think they'd see play. But they're not. Facts. Preserve Tradition, Rising Sun, Setting Moon. Fantastic. Bonds of Agony. If you play to activate three or more attack reaction chains, this gets plus three. And when it sits a hero, look at their hand and choose cards. Search their hand, deck, and graveyard, banish three cards with the same name. They shuffle. It's as insane as it is wordy, right? So, yeah, I mean, this can be broken down different ways as well, right? So when this hits a hero, look at their hand and choose a card, search their hand, deck, and graveyard. Now, depending on the ruling on this, it is insane regards to what you hit because you get to look at their deck. And knowledge is so much power in Flesh and Blood, right? So even if you, they don't have any more copies in their deck, but you are the one searching it, that's where the, the conundrum comes into place. Right, because it should be, right, it's there, so it's you doing it, meaning that you do get to instantly look at exactly what their game plan is, exactly what version of what deck they're running, and that makes it ridiculously strong, regardless of then feeding into news actual ability. And once more, right, zero for plus three, great value, it has stealth, so that's another great mechanic. Uh, if you've played or activated three or more attack reactions, right, still fantastic it the bonds of acne is insane new is new is insane but so are all of them right race of prognosis when it's hit hero bash top card of the deck then look at the hand and bash card with the same color as the bash card whenever this bash is an action card gain one life so they've given one life to all the new effects rather than silver right just so that you have the ability to sustain to the late game but i really don't think it was necessary i think they could just have no claws for bashing cards but yeah this this as well again both are blue so that's fantastic just a nick. Tag attack action with one or less gets plus five. Again, this breaks the, the normal cost curve 
a zero should be three with an effect or a four with no effect. One should be four with an effect or five with nothing. This is, you know, choose one or both. So it's plus five. And then if it has stealth, when this hit smash the top card of their deck. So zero for plus five, activate these other reaction effects, right? Where you need to, sorry, not that one, just this one. Where you need to play reactions. It's just too insanely standard to then also have three block. I'm very curious, right? If the if the design team was, was changed slightly or something, because the effects are not anything new. They are definitely insane, but the statting on them is definitely out of the norm. Like just this is power creep. This is this is visual power creep when you compare it to all other cards in the game. Right? Again, zero for three and four, one for five, four and five. I don't even think we have that many fives. You have cards like Toxicity, which are technically a plus five, but through other means. But then this is again a plus five with extra. And this onto Bonds of Agni makes it such a scary card. And there are just going to be other value one drops because now you're taking mostly blues. Art of Desire, when this hits a hero, banish top card of the deck. If it's a red, draw a card. Yellow, draw a card. Blue, draw a card again. The one life, give or take it. Don't really care. Draw a card is fantastic. You know, it's it's a step above silver, right? Because you generate the silver, but then you have to play the three resources. So if you hit the correct banish, you just automatically activate said silver. And you don't need silver to pay for most of your equipment. So yeah, all three of these are fantastic. Attraction. When it sits here, I bash top card of the deck, then bash a card from the graveyard, so it's a double, right? Again, for news ability, fantastic. When it's bashed a card, if you bash another card of the same color, gain one life, not necessary, but great. Uh, do you think that any of these cards work in OG Arachne? See, the problem with, with Arachne, though, is in like a, a fatigue version, then yes, the life comes into play, and, you know, being able to hit more cards, because... I do think these are, well, especially this one, Bonds of Attraction, is, you know, higher burn rate than, than the other cards in Stealth. OG Arachne doesn't have the Stealth benefit as Contract, right? So I don't, I don't know if that's worthwhile. I mean, again, there's Circumvents Contract, so I can see Art of Desire definitely run for the plus as well. In, in the other Arachne, the one that benefits from Stealth, definitely. But yeah, I do think, again, across the board, these are a stronger basis. I mean, the draw a card versus life, you know? If you're running fatigue, then you want the life. You don't really care about the draw. You want to conserve your deck. So I can see some of them being run. I mean, the easiest thing to do is we'll look at, we go, ch -ch -ch. I can just type it actually, contract. That's the big thing. So in Arachne, whenever you play a card with contract, you can look at the top card of the deck, right? And you may put it to the bottom. The, it's still not a guarantee to hit the card that you're actually trying to hit, right? But it does make it a little bit better, right? If it's a card that you know will hit, you leave it there. But in that scenario, you would have hit it anyway if you are leaving it there. So the only value you actually do get from Arachne is if you can cycle it away. But then if it's, you know, still a 20 card deck, it's it's however many attack actions, how many non-attack actions, and such and such, right? Uh, so what do we have? We have contracts. You may banish opponent's reaction cards, right? When you complete the contract, Contracts active while it's face up in the arena. So the other nice thing is contracts last across the combat chain, right? But in saying that, you could play a contract card and then use these other high value banish cards, for instance. The only downside is you don't have access to Slither, like new. But you could take some stuff so you have a little bit or some of the other cards to give go again. So yeah, I could, I could see some of them being played. Uh, double Trouble, if you play to activate two or more attack reactions, it's chain link, this gets plus two. So this is also another big uh, sort of rework for Assassin, is, you know, you, you usually play one card and you react, and now you're getting benefit for doing so. Zari. Alright, from, from recollection, the, the previous stealth basis was not that great. Right, I mean, so it's workable, but in terms of value, these are definitely better. What's your benefit? You get to swap it out. So the thing is, you don't really care, right? Isolate is still probably the biggest because it denies that first step, right? So you isolate, they can't defend with one more than one card, and then you swap into something bigger. I mean, so in my eye, 
they pressure a lot better, right? So isolate, while I'm using that as an example, is probably the only real, real pressurable one, right? These, in, in a sense, you're able to put them forward, show your opponent, and then, you know, it's a 50-50. Do I play around this, or do I try and play around Uzari's ability? Uh, it kind of raises the skill ceiling, I want to say, of the deck, but I do think some of them are taken. The ones that definitely, you know, for instance, Double Trouble, right? If you play two or more, you get to buff it. That is good. Because again, you have that out instead of swapping into a different attack and you can save set attack for later. But I, I can't say I play Assassin too much, right? To, to fully understand or, you know, give proper, proper advice. Bonds of Memory. When it sits here, I bash top card of the deck, then bash card from the graveyard. Again, double, right? And this, this whole clause... The whole bash card from their graveyard. Well, it's not designating it, so I assume you get to pick, which then again makes contract. I mean, I can see contract being taken in new, because again, you have slither, you have those ways of easy go again to then be able to set up contract and on the chain link be able to use these these mechanics to then be able to you know hit something in the graveyard. And uh, yeah, it must be you get to pick, right? Because whenever this bashes a card. This is banished another card with the same name, right? So you don't get to pick the top card, but you get a freebie to pick from the graveyard. Uh, actually, no, we need to check. If contract is banished from deck or if contract is just banish a card. Yeah, no, so you just contracted to banish an opponent's card, right? So either way, it definitely works better because you're no longer, you're no longer taking a chance. You hit the graveyard, which is somewhat less impactful, but not bad to then always fulfill contract. So yeah. There's definitely going to be a mix, and they're definitely they're definitely making both stealth and contracts more usable across the board. Designs of Plesh, bash top card of the deck, right? Whenever this bashes. So if they had contract instead of stealth, and it was just whenever you fill a contract, gain one life, they would be absolutely insane. But yeah, they do definitely mix well with the old assassins. Um, Pulse of Desire. Banish the top deck, reaction, or instant. This is another big change, right? So we don't have any banish, reaction, or instance in the old set of Assassin. They are always just reaction. So tying instant into it is definitely a lot better because there are definitely some strong instant cards and taking an instant card out of play and then also getting a benefit. The one life, again, throw awayable. But, you know, doing said thing is, is definitely good. Mind's Desire, non-attack action. Yeah, there's nothing really to say about that. Pick up the pieces. If you play to activate an attack, reaction to this chain link, this gets plus one and damage that would be dealt by this can't be prevented. Enigma play around, some other play around, Oasis play around. You know, it, it's good. I mean, you've got other ways to buff it. The plus one is kind of minor, but zero cost with stealth. Yeah, like in Uzari, again, this pressures because you need to leave this on play if they don't over defend it. And then you have the the get around for damage prevention, you can then take some other reactions, or if they do, you can then, you know, use Uzari to swap into something else that might land. All right, Illusionist and their rework. That's another big thing, right? I don't know about Ninja, but this is definitely reworking to stealth and contract and making them a bit better, more consistent, which is similar in Heavy Hitters, what they did with, obviously, Intimidate. But I do have a little bit more time. So we have Cosmos, Insane. Again, in the illusion slot, so everyone can run it. Which is kind of interesting, because I don't think we we necessarily see another illusionist before Enigma rotates. I, I the, the, the three of them, right? K.O. leaves, and then they all just see a lot of play, right? Faye probably leaves as well, but a lot of play is going to be shifted to these three, because they also fit these unique play styles to attract all different people. So I, I do see them LLing quite quickly. But yeah, so during your turn, or as you control with ward, weapons with base damage equal to ward. And once we turn attack, if they have a counter, go again. Right? So again, fantastic. It activates a lot of the cards above, a lot of other cards. I mean, again, Shimmer of Silver, instead of just being generate a counter, is now give your aura go again, basically, which is fantastic. It's a wonderful weapon. It's like the final version of Luminaris. So I do think it is appropriately balanced might be a little bit on the on the strong side but it's it's nowhere near beckoning misplayed to me 
but it's definitely the linchpin of the deck. All right, Ancestral Etching. So put three plus one counters and target Aura with Ward you control. If you could spread them out around, this would be more insane. But as it is, it's still great. It also has this condition. If you control Spectral Shield, you may play this as though it were instant. So another way to also reread this is if you give it go again, right? And we saw above there are some ways to give actions go again. Then this now generates an action point, right? Which is also strong. Essence of Ancestry Body, when this leaves the arena, you control no illusion to auras. The next time you'll be dealt damage by a red source, prevent it. This is, is kind of nuts as well, right? The fact that these are uh, blankets, get out of jail free card against these certain colors. Ward two, ward two, ward two. And again, three block. I don't, I don't understand how so many cards in this have three block and then, you know, the throwaway ones or the common slot are properly started. So it, it's definitely deck tech, but it's definitely usable, right? They start at two attack, which is good enough. Mm. This one's a bit more iffy for me, but I still think it's strong. I think again, across the board, the cards in this set, are the, the power creep the game was gonna see at some point. When this enters, if you draw no other illusionists, put three counters on it or enters would go again, right? So a nice way to start again, one, two, three block. If you don't get go again, it's just something to sit on your board to protect your actual spectral shields or the other stuff that you are trying to build up. So a lot of this stuff just sees play because it's just, it's it's for the ward game versus the phantasm game that Illusionist was previously running. I mean, I also see them, you know, potentially working out in, uh, in well, not New Prism actually, thinking about it, right? Because the figments, but some of the figments have strong enough buffs where you could just have them and not use the angel claws and then go into a, a giant ward consensus. But you put a figment into play, I can't remember, it. Is it when soul triggers? So new prism is whenever I come up with herald is point to your soul. You may search your deck for a figment. Other than that, figments, figments, uh, what? They are heavily costly. Yeah. And they don't really have ongoing effects. Hmm. What's the cause to banish a card from your soul? Yeah, it seems like they're, they're sort of planning for a new one, but again, Cosmos will rotate out with Enigma. So they'll have to come up with a new ward weapon, which kind of, it kind of feels to me they could have printed this, not given it to Enigma, and then given Enigma something else, right? And then the ward is just a whole new avenue that Illusionist will always have, no matter what gets printed, because there's a, there's only up or down, right, if they remake this card. And up is too insane, down is going to feel bad. Solitary Companion enters, if you control no other Illusionist, Auras, create Spectral Shield, so ward and protect said Spectral Shield, but correctly started, right? So because of the two block, Maybe not as much taken. The zero cost definitely makes it nice, right? The blue being ward one, eh. Spectral Manifestation, create a Spectral Shield token. Then if you control no other auras, put three plus one counters on it. So create a Spectral Shield token with go again. That is kind of strong. The two cost is kind of, hmm. Maybe you take the blue, right? And again, you just treat this as create a Spectral Shield token with go again. That's always the, the lens that I'm going to look at these cards through because that's the game plan, right? With Cosmos. Vengeful Apparition, when this leaves the arena, if you control no Illusion Storas, you may play your next Illusion Stora with cost two or less this turn as though it were instant. Again, if it has go again, right, then you generate an action point as well. If you do it enters with go again. So Vengeful Apparition is probably the strongest common that I see. But overall, Shimmers and just normal Spectral Shield shenanigans is probably strong enough by itself. And the game plan is just find Shimmers, put Shimmers on board anytime Shimmers leaves, play another one, recycle it back from the graveyard using various effects, and then just try and build Spectral Shields. Uh, Spectral Shield, don't worry. Okay, so the target timing, Katakara, right? Once for an action, pay two, go again. When it stacks next crafting time, you play this combat chain gets plus one. I think the two is, is sort of a detriment to it. And then the fact that it only gives plus one. If it was two for a plus two, maybe. But as it is, it's still taking because it activates Crouching Tiger. It's just, once again, significantly better things to do with Crouching Tigers and significantly better ways to activate them and have them buffed. So I don't know if that is generally that useful, right? 
kind of feels like he got the short end of the, the literal stick compared to the other two weapons. But nonetheless, if we didn't get as insane cards for Crouching Tongue as what we've gotten, then I would I would probably say it's it's a lot better than it is. Mask of the Wizened Whiskers. Uh, when this defends, put a card with combo from your graveyard on the bottom of your deck, right? Recycle a card for you to then find out with Zen. It's just absolutely not necessary, right? It's just not needed. But it is still strong. Any any form of cycle is just fantastic in the three Mystic classes, it looks like, because you can build your deck around these specific payoff cards that you can then just, again, reuse over and over again, and you have easy enough ways to try and get to them. Chase the Dale. When this stacks, if Crouching Tiger was the last attack, this combat chain has go again, and the next Crouching Tiger gets plus three. Again, already kind of better. Then the Tame and Katakara, and then not if they hits, it's if the Crouching Tiger was the last attack, this combat chain, and again, you can play them for zero, get another Crouching Tiger back, get it plus three, and have a four with go again. And with the uh, the number of Crouching Tigers you kind of have access to, I, I definitely think you can probably get away with just starting a chain, saving the two resources, with a zero attack Crouching Tiger. Maul, choose one or both. Tank, tank, action card with one or less base gets plus three. Tank, Crouching Tiger gets, when this hits, create two Crouching Tigers in your badge zone. You may play them this turn. Insane. Now, I, I saw that, you know, some people were upset there's nothing for Katsu. But I think, again, what they're doing is creating alternative archetypes that are, you know, functional enough. So, you know, yeah, you can't do the normal stuff with Zen, but now Crouching Tiger is a lot more applicable. And uh, if the, the Mystic Tiger card was in the normal Ninja Source, you know, then Combo Shenanigans would be a foot. But it's nice to have different branches and hopefully for the longevity of the game, right? Again, Ward is now another pathway for Illusionist. Tigers is now a appropriate other pathway. And for Assassin, they're sort of reworking, so Stealth and Contract are, are viable. Maul across the board, I should say, not just in Select Heroes. Maul is definitely fantastic. Territorial Domain, if you create a Crouching Tiger this turn, this gets plus three, right? So, you know, Transcend, use Zen, you lose the combo card, you get Crouching Tiger, but this has five. You then start your next turn with the Crouching Tiger. That's that's kind of good. There's other ways to create Crouching Tigers and then have them for your next turn, right? So you're definitely aiming for the Mystic card. So across the board, this is probably weaker, but with uh, the cards that Mystic has access to, this is probably decent. Aspect of the Tiger Bonnie. When it stacks, if a red attack action card was the last attack, this combat chain, this gets go again and creates a crouching target in your bash zone. You may play it this turn. It's just a combo filler, zero cost. You know, what, what can go wrong with it? Just more stuff to get further the crouching tiger game as well as hit some other things across the board. Now, one thing I didn't actually point out looking at the above cards is the color schemes, right? I wish they would do this with more cards and hopefully we see that going forward, right? So it's blue, so it's blue, red, so it's red, yellow, so it's yellow. We saw it in Outsiders with the uh, Feather of the Tip cards. And I guess technically the, uh, oh God, you know, the Dose and Arrow with Frailty, whatever it's called. But it's it's definitely a very nice touch. Too niche, deck tech maybe, but still, you know, okay cards. It is what it is. Do we get Flex? Yeah, we got Flex Call as well and Pounce and Key. So these slots, while for limited, I, I can sort of understand it. I can understand where the, the Katsu players come into it and go, well, we could have gotten something better. I always hate seeing reprints in a set, no matter how good it is for limited. Flesh and Blood has successfully reinvented the wheel so many times. They are capable of it. We don't need reprints of this caliber. We need fresh new ideas. It's just a slight tweak. It doesn't matter. It's all fun. So yeah, that's sort of a letdown. When it hits, create a Crouching Tiger in your Banish Zone. You may play it this turn. Zero, go again. With potential to create, create a Crouching Tiger. All right, so some of the other cards, the go again is tied to the hit, I believe, or tied to a Crouching Tiger. So this again is a nice combo starter. Untamed, when you uh, when this attacks, your next Crouching Tiger you play, this combat chain gets plus one. The one cost is sort of a letdown to it, but still nice enough for Crouching Tiger. All right, on to the generics. We're almost there. Rowdy Locals, if this is defended by an action card, this gets plus two. 
when this hits hero, discard a card. If you do, they discard a card. Fantastic, right? Just, again, it's, uh, any of these effects, to me, are always undersold. Because mental game-wise, they pressure. Or they reveal something about your opponent if you actually think about it, right? So if this hits hero, discard a card. If you do, they discard a card, right? If they let this through, yes, it's minor damage, but if they let this through, it means that they have something that they don't care about in their hand, which also means that their turn is, regardless, going to be a little bit weaker than what it could be. So you're still getting that upside of getting damage through. You don't really care about you discarding a card because you get a card back at the end of your turn, and you've got knowledge. Knowledge is always powerful in flesh and blood. I like rowdy locals. Uh, the weakest link, when it's hits hero, look at their hand and choose a card without base defense. If you do, they discard it and you draw a card. That is just the previous card, kind of on steroids. Again, knowledge about their hand. If they're defending it, well, they probably have one of those cards with ours. But base defense, which is usually a linchpin to a powerful turn, right? So, again, knowledge through them blocking it or value through them not blocking it, right? Just them discard, you draw a card is fantastic upside. Again, with three block, should be two. Emissary of Wind, when it stacks, you may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your deck. If you do, this gets go again. So it's an E-Strike that you don't necessarily have to fulfill. And if you do, it has go again. So it will definitely be the cheaper alternative for Inline Strike in a lot of cheaper classes, right? Classes that want to run, you know, cheaper cards across the board and will necessarily always take the go again. Right, so in big, obviously, it does nothing. I could have seen them just reprinting three versions of this, especially because it's in the rare slot. Facts, they have, haven't they? Where is it? Yeah, so there should be two more rares with it. No, that doesn't work because it should be on this side, unless they're all red, but I can see them definitely doing that. So uh, instead of this, it will be, you know, gain plus two or draw a card, right? If you fulfill the discard, I can definitely see them actually doing that and breaking up in line strike. Yeah, I'd put money on that, right? That the other two are more emissaries of blah, 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 and are just the alternative uses of in line strike. But again, correctly started at two defense, making it weaker than it is, but it's still a good card. But if this was two, right? Now it's just, this is fantastic because it's a three block red, in some circumstances with a powerful effect. Gravekeeper. When it stacks a hero, you may bash a card from the graveyard. Really only for new, but I mean, it still does disrupt some game plans, right, that they're building. I mean, you take this against Riptide, you can hit something that they want to cycle back, or any ranger, right, with the arrows. You can take some of those powerful arrows out of play. So it definitely has its deck tech use, but again, two block, devaluing it for the long game. Belt of Bastion. Fantastic across the board, right? So, three for seven, and also a strong effect. I, I prefer prevention. God, I'm bad with P's and R's. I prefer prevention over just having the three block, right? Because again, this plays around, you know, reactions or anything that mess with defense while also netting you that one if you defend alone though. So it is balanced in that aspect, but I do think that is, is a great take on a card and it's a fantastic looking, looking card, right? It's kind of out of place in the set, but fantastic nonetheless. Okay, one of the seeds. When it stacks, you next attack this combat chain with one or less base, gets plus one, go again. It's just, you know, a, a sequence builder. It's kind of nice. Uh, one plus one. Ooh. These should have been differently started, right? This should have been uh, one or less base. I'm trying to think how it would have been uh, the two or less. Yeah, it should have just been that, right? Two or less, plus one, three or less, plus one. But nonetheless, you know, pack filler. What can you do? It's, it, the pack across the board feels better to me than heavy hitters, in all honesty. Right, the expansion slot. Now, if you don't know, 238 is either a token, which would be an absolute bummer, but is most likely a reprint card, right? So the reason for that is that the blurb for Misfile states 13 new expansion slot cards. Count them, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Meaning that 238 is probably a reprint, and I think... Most people's bet is on Art of War. So maybe. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really disappointed if it's like an eloquence token. Right? Alright. The gold mains and states. Create a gold token, then you control three or more, create that many might tokens. Insane. Again, if you have your shield, right, and your victor, 
and you just have one other gold. This is generate three might tokens and an extra gold and proc victor's effect if it's the first thing you do on your turn. So Visit Gold Main's estate is fantastic and could have just so much more upside, right? Because then those gold, you can cycle, you can find your big attack that you want the might for. Golden Anvil, the tankiest card in the game, technically, right? So as an addition cost to play this, destroy X gold you control, equip X weapons and or equipment from your inventory, meaning that you can take your, your loadout three times over, basically, until they introduce a ruling or say something about it, right? You can take your best in slot as Olympia, three times in a row, get the benefits, whether it be tanking or cashing them in for their effects, right? That's just fantastic. Or you can take a aggressive armor set that has powerful active effects that usually destroy the equipment, golden anvil into a mid game armor set that has longer running effects, but you know, would probably still get destroyed through blocking. And then a late game armor set that probably just has super value block. And that is all fantastic. Obviously gold is the, the caveat, right? But I don't think that's too hard to do, especially in Olympia with all the wager mechanics, right? But yeah, even, even one gold is just huge upside with this card. Placing a weapon, fantastic. As you take some more aggressive weapons. Yeah, good, good. Supercell, wonderful for Max. Uh, I hope it has combo potential, but we'll have to still see. We're, we're thinking about that. In fact, we started the stream sort of doing that. But put X steam counters on X type hype drivers you control. Create a hyperdrive token with X steam counters. So puts, you know, one on one, create one with one. Okay. Put two on two, create one with two. Fantastic. Put three on three, create one with three. Godly. So it's just it's such a, a good, impactful card for Max. And I do think it'll be enough to, to bump him up and really start him racking in points. The problem is so many heroes are coming out of Misfile looking good, but they just, they don't look as great as the three Mystic Heroes do, in my opinion. The Evo sets, the feel bad that five slots of the expansion slot, so 40% are Mechanologist, what can you do? So it's a nice armor set. It obviously f uh, fulfills their, their biggest weakness of Arcane Barrier. Is it run in everyone? It's definitely run in Techno because instant speed, it's blue at zero cost, which is probably the biggest detriment about the equipment. Makes Singularity kind of doable, but not as doable. Now, Supercell has another condition that we didn't actually look at, which unfortunately is, is not as good as I would like it to be. So we go back and has this. If X is three or greater, you may shuffle a construct. And I really wish that's where it cut off, right? Nitro Mechanoid from your bash zone into your deck. So if this was, you may shuffle a construct, this would be taken for, for singular shenanigans. And there's no reason it couldn't have been. Right? It's, it wouldn't be broken, it wouldn't be busted. It would just prevent the whole feel bad about banishing Singularity and the fact that it's legendary and the fact that you can only take one. So I really wish this was just shuffle a construct. Or again, going back to Bright Lights, that Singularity was a goddamn Evo. So when you banish it, it is there and ready to play as Teclo. But it is, it is the worst legendary, right? Because of how it was made. Because of one singular wording. But yeah, so Recall is uh, return one action card from your banish zone to the top of your deck, which makes it highly impactful. We then have Heat Drive also, right? So items are actions. Doing Dart at all shenanigans, in a lot of classes shenanigans, just getting an attack and knowing what you're drawing into. Fantastic, it's instant, right? So you can play it on your phone's turn. You can play it at the end of your turn to make sure you draw into it. Good. Uh, heat Drive, next attack action card you play this turn, costs one less. Yeah, it's okay. Their no armor means that I probably see the headpiece run and the uh, the legs, everything else maybe not. So when us equip the next attack action card you turn, gets boost. Now I'm curious about this, right? Does it stack? Because I am because I know there are cards obviously double boost, but it would make maximum velocity an easier thing. Maximum velocity, the correct one. The one that has you have to have boosted X amount of times. But yeah, having an extra boost, it's good. I don't know if it it is an action point generator, right? Because boost just gives go again. Boost doesn't generate an action point. But either way, I do think the, the legs and the head are probably useful. And then there's just better stuff, obviously, in the chest slot and the arms to run. The arms are kind of nice. I wish this was kind of different. I don't know how exactly to do it, but just deal one damage to any target seems kind of weak. In all honesty, it was deal one damage to... 
every available target. I don't know, deal one damage every for every time you've boosted this turn. Uh, deal one damage for every card under this. Something like that, just to give it a little bit more oomph. Because one damage doesn't quite cut it. But I mean, it's 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 a little nice, right? It's a popper for ward. Right? I probably shouldn't use popper. It's a ward breaker, right? You can target a spectral shield token, target the one with the most counters. Does, does that work? That doesn't work, do, do they? This is, they don't have spectre. Now that I'm thinking about it. You can't swing in popped ward unless it has... Yeah, so no, it's still your opponent's choice which card they sack with ward in that scenario. So yeah, not not fantastic, which is two misses in a row because I don't think Evo Magneto was that good either. But then we're on to the fantastic cards again. So long draw, half glove. Destroy this, put two cards from your hand and or arsenal on the bottom of your deck. Next arrow attack, this turn gets plus four. Or as I like to put it, uh, turn, turn three of a kind into a plus four draw one. Right? So, three of a kind, if you already have your arrow loaded up, right? You draw three cards, you can't play anything except the card in your arsenal. You then long draw, you sack two cards, and you have that other card to pitch for said arrow in the arsenal. Yeah. So, I, I do like that little combo. Otherwise, it still has fantastic use. It's still just a great buff. Two cards for a plus four, right? In the arm slot, it's nice and strong, right? Free cycle as well. And the battle wall. So, what's not to love? Murky Water. Another one of my faves from the set because I'm really a, a Riptide fan, right? So if this has a name counter, it gets plus one and dominates. When this hits, you may banish face down, throw traps from a graveyard. If you do, choose one at random and put it into your arsenal. So it's an auto trap load up. So recycle a trap and it has the potential to be a seven for three with dominate. Now, the reason I say seven for three is because usually the only ways to really consistently give it that aim counter is through a bow effect. So most likely you, you've spent three, load up, give it a name counter and make it a, a seven with dominate, which is still completely fine, right? So Nourishing Riptide is a deck I love to play and this just overshadows that greatly, even at the, the slightly extra cost. Whew. I think I've been talking for too long. We're almost there. Kindle. Super unnecessary, super fantastic. Amp 1, next time you would deal arcane damage this turn, okay, this turn, so any turn, said deal that much plus 1, this happens before prevention effects, so it's just a buff, basically a stack, it's 0, it's instant, mm, there we go, it's 0, it's instant, and if you have no cards in hand, draw a goddamn card, meaning that even if your hand is all Kindle, you can play them all, put them on the stack, pitch away your other card with Kano, and then let them resolve, draw a card, Kano, resolve, Kano, resolve, Kano. So it's 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 a draw three on your opponent's turn with three more chances at Kano. It's insane. Plus then the amp, right? The amp was totally unnecessary, but this is just so strong. Obviously it doesn't get hit by Kano, so there is that downside, and this is one of the more balanced cards in the set for this reason, of again, having the risk if you Kano and this is on top of your deck you kind of screwed but it's definitely worth the upside it's definitely the whole flesh and blood metric of this this has that double-edged nature so i do like kindle now 35 is a light card most likely or another wizard but i doubt it's a wizard right so there is a scheme to the way that the expansion slot normally goes uh do i try and remember it by head yeah. uh assassin brute guardian warrior mechanologist Ranger, Rune Blade, Wizard, then, uh, who did I miss? I missed Ninja, Ninja's somewhere in here, right? And then Light, well actually I think it goes weirdly Draconic Light, and we haven't seen Elemental, right? Except for Dust Till Dawn, right? So this is most likely a Light card. It's, it's probably a Bolton card, because I think they want to get him up just a little bit uh, before the Armory deck comes out. So probably another Bolton card. But I would, uh, yeah, I'd bet money that it is a light card with their normal metric. But it could also be another wizard card. And then finally, no, I skipped two. Shadow Realm Horror. As additional cost to play this match, three random cards in your graveyard. If one or more has six or more, God. So we get into Yu Gi Oh territory and it's a little worrisome. Six or more bash this way, this gets plus one, two or more, this gets to go again, three or more, you may play a bash card this way. So you get Shadow Realm Horror into Shadow Realm Horror. Oh, let's see. It's, it's a nice card, right? 
has just huge upside. Otherwise, it's just strong by itself. Again, it's, it's a three block. I think you, you run three copies. Alguent Eulogy. Generating Alguent tokens, as I've been told, is just fantastic in Rune Blade. So, yeah, it's a free because of Rune Gaze. It's easy enough to get one counter. And then when it closes, as long as a hero has lost life this turn, which is also interesting because it's a hero, meaning that if you yourself have lost life through various means, this still works. So that is great. And then lastly, 238. Again, money's on reprint, money's on Art of War. Whew, 